The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 8th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you, got, when you and I make up that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Uh, but more important than that... And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. That's the number to call in on. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. So please send that off early. The earlier, the better. And in that subject heading, please put radio show question and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of green out there. You got all the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside. The XLV healthcare sector just went slightly negative. That's the only sector inside the S&P 500 trading to the downside. Dow's up 64, S&P 8, NASDAQ 32, Russell's up 10, Semi's up 25, Trendies are up 17. You've got gold trading down 21 bucks. Silver's off 30 cents. The U.S. dollar index up 370 ticks or so. Silver is down 30 cents, if I didn't say that. Lights Recruit is up nearly two bucks. Natural gas is flat, and the 30 year Treasury printed out 118.27. Now, leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got micro strategy. 26 bucks, 4.5%. Lululemon, 21 bucks, 4.5%. HubSpot, 12 bucks, 2.5%. United Rental, number one waiting inside the Dow, up 2.5%. That's a $12 move. NVIDIA is up 10 bucks. I believe we took a look at NVIDIA, and I think NVIDIA's got that TD9 count bottom. That is up uh, 10 bucks today. That's a 2% move. To the downside is Restoration Hardware. That's off 38 bucks, 13%. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, 22 bucks, 9%. SBA Communications Corp, 3%, 7 bucks. Uh, Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals, 5 bucks, 3%. Pool Corp down 5 bucks. That's 1.5%. So we got some movers. And we've got some shakers, but let's begin with, let's begin with it was Jobs Friday. It is Jobs Friday. And in the case of Jobs Friday out here, here is the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And we're taking a look at the 10 days prior and the 10 days post Jobs Friday over the course of the last 15 years. Well, we've been rallying up into this point in time. Looks like it's following along this analog. This analog says that we rally for the next seven trading sessions out there. This shows the prior 10 and the post 10 of the job. Oh, she's Louise. That's not good losing that uh, monitor. That would be a bad thing. It's so it's so interesting. This uh, this tool here seems every now and then to get to a monitor and it shuts it down. So weird. I, I need David White around here to tell me what in the Sam Eck is going on. But that's the seasonal pattern that we're dealing with here. At least that's the seasonal pattern for the Dow. So this pattern tells us we should head higher. We take a look at the, this, that's the labor market. If we take a look at the actual seasonal pattern for the Dow, we can do it really over the last 15 years. Let's just use the same time frame. Now, in this case here, let me, oh boy, we're going to have to change monitors. Let's change monitors. Let's go over to this monitor. Give me a moment. Let me change it on the actual screen out here. Hopefully it doesn't do that to this screen. That would be here. Okay. So now we're looking at the seasonality charts. Let me just make this a little bit easier. We can really see what the uh, trend is out here. And so you can see over the last 10, 15 years, we're basically in the unfavorable seasonal period of time. 
and price should be moving lower. Now, the uh, the Dow actually has a still has a TD9 count top in it. This suggests that price should move lower into about the December 19th time frame. Now, that's over the course of the last 15 years. If we take it, look at it over the last 126 years, it'll take just a moment here to populate. What this is going to tell us is that we should be seeing a market turn today or Monday out there. So let's keep that in mind. But we do have two diverging patterns that are in play as we speak right now. Now, there's a request inside the Tiger's Den from CKP wanted me to take a look at the seasonal chart for the S&P 500. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put that up here, see if there's any difference. Well, we're not going to have 126 years. We've got 90 uh, five years worth of data. When we take a look at this chart here. This also shows us that we should have formed a top. Now, in the case of the ES Mini and the S&P 500, we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. It doesn't mean we can't form one. It just means that right now we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. Now, this also suggests that the market could move lower into that September 19th time frame out there. That's a seasonal. If we take a look at the events, and the event being Jobs Friday out here, we'll get to that report as soon as we can. Uh, that's not it. Why isn't there we go? So now we can take a look at reports. Let's take a look at the labor report out here. Let's take a look at the last 15 years. Let's just see how this lines up. And again, the same pattern here, CKP, uh, that we have with the uh, Dow and the S&P 500. Now, perhaps this right here in the S&P 500 looks like we should have lower for a day before uh, the rally that resumes for the next, in essence, the next seven trading sessions out there. Uh, so how are we going to figure out what all that means out there? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the patterns. So let's go take a look at the patterns out there. Let's go take a look at the four equity future contracts. For that, we're going to change screens here. We'll be over at our white background screens, screens momentarily. So here in the ES Mini, there's no way to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. Why is there no way, Stevie? Because we have never had a retracement that's even close to a 0 0.382 retracement out here. So there's no B to C that we can tie in here. We can we can draw one, but it's not going to qualify as an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, what we can see today is that just like uh, on the trading session here of November 29th, there's a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That tells us about a uh, divergence pattern in the relative strength uh, uh, indicator, but it's more than just that because there's a certain uh, set of uh, patterns that I look for. It's not just an, an immediate uh, uh, so in this case here, what this needs is it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. So it's got potential, um, and that could even take place today. Uh, so we'll want to watch that with regard to the ES Mini. In the case of the NQ, still has that TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator top with prices consolidating with inside its profiles. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, you can see its TD9 count top that took place two days ago. Any close above that high, that high, by the way, is 36,352. That negates that pattern and tells us we had higher. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, it has a sell the D point pattern. That took place out here on December the 6th. That was a bearish shooting star. That does have a retracement that is at least 0.382 and so that's got to validate to be equal CD. So again, to sell the D point pattern, that would be negated with a close above 1895.20. However, if you poke above 1895.20, you'll form bar number nine of a TD9 count. The problem is for this TD9 count pattern, it's likely to go away today. It will go away unless price closes above 1884.90. 1884.90 is where price would have to close above in order to get that TD9 count pattern. But the Russell's already got a, a topping pattern that's in place. So you got one in the Russell, you got one in the Dow, you've got one in the NQ. We just don't have one in the ES Mini. Maybe that uh, Rhodes momentum indicator signal, maybe we get that bearish reversal candle on Monday. And then maybe that 95 year or 126 year seasonal pattern with us moving into December 19th or so takes hold. We'll be right back. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. 
Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 welcome back uh, folks so um yeah, I think we covered the, at least right now, we've covered the equity future contracts. We've got a number of requests that are in, so let's go ahead and get to those and start. The first one's coming in from yesterday, and that was from Wayne, who wanted to take a look at LABU. Now, LABU is the biotech. It's, I believe, it's a two- or three-time uh, biotech ETF out here. Let me see if I can figure that out. LABU, LABD. It's either 2X or 3X out there. It's a 3X out here. So we really should be looking at the uh, at the uh, 1X. of This is for the S&P. So it's not the which it's it's not the IBB. Anybody inside the Tigers Den know which ETF? Uh, XBI. Thank you, Dan. But let's first here with regard to uh, LABU, and we'll switch it over to XB, XBI here uh, momentarily. Uh, you can see that it's going to complete a TD. It's going to confirm a TD9 count top today. It'll complete that pattern on Monday. So that's suggesting that this should pull back to test its oscillator and change line around 81.98. The weekly time frame chart, it's got a Rose Mentum indicator bottom. It's trading above profile, suggesting it wants to make move to 12140. But really, it's the individual. It's the 1X. So let's go over to XBI, because that's going to really provide you with the better information out here as to uh, what's going on. If you would take a look at the LB, LABU chart, you can see, look at the monthly chart. Right. It's just that it's just the way that these uh, doubles and triples work out here. But here we take a look at XBI. And again, thank you, Dan, for that. You've got a TD9 count top that's going to confirm today. It'll complete on Monday. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. We can see that uh, price is trading above profile. It suggests to move to 84.44. So when the TD9 count top does complete at the end of Monday, if on Tuesday, Wednesday, price starts trading above that, it'll negate that pattern. And that would be your signal that's setting up to 84. 44. In the meantime, what well, you should prepare for over the course of the next couple of days is the retracement. The retracement should head back to the 77.31 level. That's the first level of support on a move lower out there. On a monthly chart, we just have a consolidation with inside its profile. This is going to potentially close higher for three consecutive days. If we take a look at its stand steps out here, what we'll see is this had, uh, when it came off the bottom there, that had five moves to the upside. That was a real good signal that this was a change in trend uh, that is in place out here. Uh, we 
we've only seen now a couple of uh, two-bar pullbacks out there, so it's got a very strong momentum move. But nonetheless, you've got that TD nine count top to be paying attention to. On a 30-minute time frame, I don't see any kind of a topping pattern as we speak right now, so no reason for me to pull that over. So, Wayne, thanks for waiting an extra day out there. I would just tighten up your stop on that. Uh, just because you have a TD nine count top doesn't mean it's going to take hold, uh, but it's a great signal, so you want to pay attention to at least the intraday charts to see if you start to see some topping formations out there. Let's go to our next request. That came in from Hector and Patty. Hector and Patty noticed the same thing I did on my screen. When I took a look at my initial screen as we came on there, I noticed that Franco Nevada was straight to the upside. And that's a big element of the uh, of the GDX. And so uh, the question was, is this a bottom out here? You know what we've got is we don't have a bullish reversal candle uh, today at this stage here. What we do have is we have bar number eight. Now, in order for bar number eight to complete, and that's a likely outcome, it just simply needs to close below the close of bar number four. The close of bar number four was 110.12. The issue with regard to the TD9 count bottom pattern out here, Hector, is that price needs to close on Monday below bar number five's close. And that's at 107.45. We're trading above that as we speak right now. Now, so far, the rally in Franco, Nevada, we're trading at 108.21. My system right here is showing 108.51, so I've got this delay thing that's going on. But what we can see is that prices run right up into resistance, Hector and Patty, and that's that red oscillator and change line. So no bottom yet. You'd actually be better off in looking for a bottom from Franco, Nevada, for asking this thing to trade at least lower come Monday and close below that close of bar number five out there. Then we could get a TD nine count bottom pattern out there. There we, we would actually get a TD nine count bottom pattern, and that would come Monday. It would complete that pattern on Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, on Tuesday of next week. Today is Friday. On a weekly time frame chart, we've got uh, the only thing we've got out here is prices testing the swing point. That's a swing point from September 30th. Volume there was 3.2 million shares. We came into it last week. It was with 5 million shares. This week, so far for Franco Nevada, we're down with 3.9 million. So we got 3.9 going against 3.7. So we're, even if we reject that swing low, you'd like to see at least reject that swing low. By reject it, that means close back of 119.48. We're trading right now at 108.23. So it's got to close back above, I'm sorry, 109.70. Jeez Louise, Stevie, wake up, 109.70. Still, it's got to rally above that. And then the, that tell us is, is that because you're testing that swing point with volume, you're likely to go back down and test it. That's what could get us to that ninth uh, candle, that nine TD nine count candle out there. So Hector and Patty, good eyes. Uh, thank you for asking the question that I was even wondering myself out there. And now we know the answer. All right, we took care of the seasonal patterns there for CKP. The next request that we've got is to take a look at Google. That's from McGuppy inside the Tigers. And, and uh, what McGuppy would like to find is an entry point. So if we take a look at Google, what do we know out here? So in the case of Google, the only top that I really have is price testing a prior swing point. That's a swing point, it looks like, from October 12th. The volume there was 18 million shares. That swing point was tested with uh, 17 million shares. And then it was tested and rejected with 8 million shares. So there was your signal that moved price lower. Now, I don't know what pattern. I don't see a pattern out here to the downside. That retracement there between this uh, letter D, that high out there from the trading day of November 22nd and the retracement up into November 29th, that's more than a 0.786. So we're not going to say that was A to B equals CD to the downside. But you're looking for an entry area. And price is now trading above the top of its daily profile and above its green oscillator and change line. And yesterday, where price was moving into the swing point from November 22nd. That had 17 million shares. This did 38 million shares. So this is telling us that it should get back up to at least test that low. That low from November 22nd, 139 even Steven. Today's high so far, 137.99. So odds favor price is gonna get up there. Again, you're asking for an entry point. The best way to find an entry point on something like that. So the question is, do you want to enter a long trade in Google just yet? Well, shoot, Stevie, why are you asking that question? McGuppy, the reason I'm asking that question is we just have a good old fashioned consolidation with inside the weekly profile. That's between 128.29, 138.64. And we have a TD nine count pattern that's going to complete inside of Google at the end of this month. And right now you have a consolidation with inside that pattern out there. So um, if you're going to 
take an entry in here. So the longer term is saying, be careful out there. You can see the last TD9 count bottom that formed. That actually formed on uh, no uh, the month of November in 2021. It completed that pattern in December 2021. And then we ended up moving lower until it made a TD9 count bottom. So the TD9 counts on the monthly time frame chart, you know, pretty good uh, signal. I can see one that failed here as well. That was back in February of 2021 out there. Um, but to answer your specific question, where would be a buy point? We'd have to go down at least to some intraday charts out here because it still has strong momentum and look for some type of pattern. Now, we don't see any kind of pattern just yet. We do see that price had pulled back this morning when it gapped down. It gapped down right into its breakout level. That was at 136.23. So clearly that's telling us it could have been an entry point. But the better thing would be to see Google form an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, we don't have the signals that that's going to happen. If price was able to take out that opening low, that opening low, by the way, was down at the 135.66 level, that would be the uh, that would give you that signal. Now, we are trading back inside that swing point from this morning. And that swing did volume of 3.6. It's a 30-minute bar we're looking at. This finishes in four minutes. Only 343,000 shares. But that was opening volume as well out there. So... Unfortunately, McGuffey, I don't really have a great answer as to where to enter right now because I don't really see the patterns out here. A pull back to the top of the profile, 134.54 could be, but I don't see an easy entry right now into Google. Steve Rhodes for TFNN. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers, TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. 
Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome uh, back, folks. Let's get to our next request out here. This coming in from Nitram inside the Tigers. I want to take a look at the Barrick Gold, G-O-L-D, as a ticker symbol. So, Nitram, what took place today, at least thus far, is price a, a gap down below the bottom of its profile. So that's a bearish message out there. And uh, it has generated, it has triggered an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. Now, it's already attained the 1 to 1.272 price expansion level. That's actually at 16.93. We're trading just below that, as you can see. The 1 to 1.618 area is 1673. The 1 to 2 would get us down towards 1652. We don't use those numbers as as price has to hit those levels. That's just where the nice next price projection areas are. What you'd be looking for here for a bottom is a bullish reversal candle. So that's what you want to keep your eyes on uh, there. We've already covered uh, Franco Nevada, so we know what to keep our eyes on there as well. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, you can see Bear Gold consolidating with inside its weekly profile. So it's got strong resistance at the 1766 area and strong support between 1571 and 1620, consolidating with inside its monthly profile as well there uh, so nothing else now this is going to be day number five of consecutive moves lower for barrack gold let's take a look at its uh, dance steps out here and uh, well Jesus made eight consecutive moves to the downside that's as it was forming the bottom back in October it's going to be day number five so it's really kind of a bad it's really a, this bad news getting to bar number five not that it, it, five consecutive moves to the downside is telling us about a change in trend so we've got that A to B equals CD pattern, so we're not going to negate that. But I'm just saying that, quite frankly, here on the daily chart, what uh, what Barrick Gold has done today is not really a good move out there. And and, it, what, and it, you add that to the fact that we've got a sell the D point pattern inside of gold as it made that new all-time high. So that's got to make us say, hmm, something to think about. So Nitram, I hope that helps you out with regard to our, our Barrick Gold out there. Be looking for a bullish reversal candle. And, of course, uh, be paying attention to what gold is doing as well out there because if gold is heading in a southerly direction, even if this does make a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern, it would become somewhat suspect. Rose inside the Tigers then wants to take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. BRK, we take a look at BRK, we can see that a TD9 count bottom is very likely to form today, Rose, on a daily basis and complete on Monday. Now, it may get priced back to its breakout level at 348.60, doesn't have to, and even if it gets below that with the TD9 count pattern, that's okay. If you were going to ask Stevie, what's the last high that formed out there? Well, that's pretty easy. It was a TD9 count top, and that high formed on the bar following bar number nine. So it looks to me like Berkshire Hathaway is getting ready to form a bottom that either took place yesterday or will take place on Monday out there. And that's the pattern. When we take a look at a weekly time frame chart, you're back inside its weekly profile. Now, a counter trend move to the downside would get us to 347.68 out there. So we got 347.68 as a potential target, 348.60 as another target there arose. If you're looking to get in, that means come back and let's take a look at this on uh, Monday, Monday or Tuesday out there. The monthly time frame already has a momentum indicator top. Uh, price just consolidating, in essence, with inside its uh, bearish structured monthly profile. And on a weekly time frame, not much out there other than just trading back inside this profile. So keep your eyes on the daily out there. With regard to a 30-minute time frame chart, good question. Is there any bottoming signal there, Steve-O? And the answer to that question is, well, there is. And that took place back here. Let me get my cursor going. That was Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom. That formed a 1030 morning back on December the uh, 7th. I guess that would be yesterday. Now price is pulling back and it's testing support. And this is a key support level. You're also trading inside that swing point. Now that swing on a 30 minute basis did 90,000 shares. Last bar down, 75 so far. And we're only five minutes into it. Let's not even worry about what that volume is. So watch the volume on that 30 minute bar out there for Berkshire Hathaway. But I'm not suggesting that it's formed that top or that bottom today. I'd really wait for today. 
It's candle to confirm and come back uh, to uh, tomorrow out there tomorrow. I mean, on the Monday for Berkshire Hathaway. So those are the patterns that I see. I hope that that helps you out, especially here. Another reason to, to wait when I'm looking at it is that we've only had a one day bounce. Usually you get at least a two day, at least a two day bounce out here. So coming off of that high, uh, you know, uh, we saw a four day move. We saw a three day move out there. That's get a lot of pressure to the uh, downside for Berkshire Hathaway. So let's wait till that bar following bar number nine forms out there. Look, those TD9 counts have worked their magic on the uh, daily time frame the last two times out. So the third time could be the charm out there. Rose, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Have a fantastic weekend. Ray in Sarasota wants to take a look at his favorite uh, instrument, and that is Nordic American Tankers. Actually, I don't know if it's favorite instrument, but it's one of them that he loves to trade. His question is, Steve-O, where is support? And that is a great question. The next area of support to the downside is 379. Why is it the 379? Because we've been trading for four consecutive days below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. Not a good scene out there. I do not have any kind of a bottoming pattern just yet. I take that back. I do take that back. Let me just make sure. It looks visually like I've got a buy the D point pattern. Let me just make sure. Uh, we'll just draw in the A to B line. That was a TD9 count bottom, took price up towards its oscillator and change line. And now if we go to the uh, C point, we did. So this does have a this does have a buy the D point pattern. So the real level of support is a low of that bull sash candle, which is the prior candle out there, which is going to be 386. So you ask for levels of support. 386 is one, 379 is another. Now, what you'd really love to see is you'd love to see price today at least rally and hold the bottom of its weekly profile. The bottom of that profile is at 389. You close below 389 with regard to Nordic American tankers, and boy, that could be telling us about a weekly change in trend signal. Ray, as we pull this chart back, I don't know what we're going to see, but we're going to see what we see, and we're going to look at the weekly time frame chart. Do we have any closes below weekly profiles out here once we came off the bottom? We don't have that for two consecutive sessions out there. So uh, that would say this week and next week, if we close below it, then this is telling us that we're headed lower. And I don't have another level of support on the weekly time frame that I'm willing to shut out to you. We'd have to come back to the monthly and the monthly profile of support or the monthly levels of support. The first one's at 375. And the second one's at 351. So those are your numbers for support. You've got a buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame. Price closes below the level that I gave you. It negates that signal. And that would then open up the door for at least 379. Below 379, Ray, you have another breakout level. And that's one that's at 371. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Nordic American tankers. Thanks so much for your request. Now, I believe I've been through all of the requests. Nope, G-Man wants to take a look at Disney. D-I-S is the ticker symbol out here. So I tell you what, uh, uh, um, G-Man, we've got about five seconds before we start hearing the music. So let's uh, take a look at Disney, which is trading at about 93.06 uh, when we get back from this break. Did form a TD9 count top. The question is, did it form a bottom? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Disney. What do we know? We know that it topped with a TD9 count. That uh, pattern formed on November the 24th. Um, there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Was this confirmed with volume? So the B point would be the trading session from November 29th, 13.8 million shares. When it was passed, it was with 12 million shares. So a little bit lighter volume out there. So I won't put that A to B equals CD pattern in just yet. So I don't have a bottoming pattern. We have price that is trading below profile, G-Man. In order to get back to its bullish ways out there, price is going to be required to close above 94.48. The reason is that on a daily time frame, what Disney has is a bullish structured profile. No, Joey, I didn't do that. I noticed that you had that request in there, and that will come up next. Uh, but with regard to uh, Disney, again, a counter trend move in a bullish structured profile would typically find support at the center. Now it could be, uh, or resistance I should say, it could be resistance at the bottom of the profile as well, 93.67. So right now the daily time frame, I've got to term this as a counter trend move, G-Man. We look at the weekly time frame chart, it says, Steve-O, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Counter trend move, well it's a different time frame. Price is trading above profile, it's got a nice bottom, road's meant to indicate her bottom, it says it wants to eventually move up to 103.91. On a monthly time frame, we have price that ran into resistance, and that was at the top of its profile. And that's at the, let me just make sure that is the, yeah, that looks like that is at uh, 93.84. So you got 93.84, that's resistance. Your other resistance level out here is this TD9 count top. That is at 96.51. So those are your two resistance points out there, the longer term resistance points we know about 93.67 and 94.48 so i've got to go with just a counter trend move on that daily time frame um, with regard to disney this could be day number three to the upside so if in fact this is just a counter trend move in disney i would say that today's high would be the uh, top of that uh, move out there or could be the top of that move if i look to an intraday chart such as a 30 minute time frame chart out here what we don't see, G-Man, right now, well, I'll take that back. What we do see is a dark cloud cover roads momentum indicator top. So what price is going to need to do if Disney is going to pull back, first thing it's got to do is close below 9307 or close to that figure because that's its green asset on chain sign. Then if it could do that, then the question is what does it do is it test the other support levels. And there's three of them, 9191, 9170, and 9140. 
91.49. And even if price were to close below 91.49, there's one more support level. That's at 90.38. So that's your progression out there. So there's a potential for Disney to form a top. But right now, it's 30-minute signal, even though it has a topping pattern. Because price is above profile, so it's above resistance, because we have a rising price oscillator above zero, conditions are neutral. They're Quite frankly, they're neutral to bullish but really just neutral because of that uh, day, uh, that 30-minute topping pattern out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at Disney. Again, in summary right now, it looks like it's just a counter-trend move to the upside at this stage of the game. Let's go take a look at uh, WDC out here, and that is for Joe D inside the Tiger's Den. And WDC is uh, what? It used to be Winchester, Western Digital, Western Digital. Now, Western Digital, that goes back a long way. You want to know how far back that goes? Like 1983. The company that Western Digital is now used to be Maynard Electronics. And they were a little house that uh, started back in the uh, 80s out there, hard disk uh, company. How do I know that? Because, well, I ran a pretty large um, $100 million microcomputer uh, 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 retail uh, uh, store out there and uh, was in uh, was in the Orlando area and that's where they're from. But in any event, you don't really need to know that data. The question is, what's uh, Western Digital doing? What Western Digital is doing right now. Let me see if this had an A to B equals CD pattern. Did this form a sell the D point? Stevie doesn't see it. So what we've got right now is I don't really have a top. What I've got is a consolidation with inside its profile and that profile levels between 4633. That's your level of support and resistance up at 4858. That's the top of the profile. The weekly chart looks pretty good. The question is, did the weekly chart, is the weekly chart now have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside? Well, the B point that we use for that would be the week of October 6th. Volume there was 14.3 14 14 million shares. Last week, this was passed with 41 million shares. Wow, that's a pretty decent size A to B equals CD pattern. So what we do for that, just to move this over just a tad, we're going to draw in our A to B. Now we're just simply going to copy that line. This is important. So here's the A to the B line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste. And this is important, okay, um, because what you want to do with that A to B equals CD is you want to make sure that you maintain the exact same angle. Because this is where, this is how you and I can interpret the uh, charts out there. First off, on the weekly chart. Prices along the left side of the C to D leg out there. This is on the strong side. This is telling us this is more likely to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C to the upside. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection would get you up towards the 5084 level. And that's what we take a look at. There's no other topping signal or pattern inside the um, inside the uh, weekly uh, time frame chart that Stevie sees out here. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, um, it's trading with inside a bullish monthly structured profile. Typically, when you close above the center, that gives the uh, bulls the energy to move up to resistance, and that would be 53.75. So you've got a weekly A to B equals CD pattern uh, that gets us up towards that 53 level. You've got a, a monthly profile area. It's just the weekly that you're dealing with here, which is a consolidation. So if your question was, where do you enter a long trade on Western Digital? It would either be a pattern that forms on an intraday chart, such as a 30-minute chart, and here as we take a look at the 30-minute chart, we can see that the most recent pattern was a TD9 count bottom. That formed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon back on December 6th. That level was tested. That level was tested and was rejected. Now we don't have any kind of a topping signal just yet. But you'd be looking for something like that. That would be great. Or you could look for a move back towards uh, the bottom of its uh, profile on a daily basis, 46.33. The only way it's going to get back to 46.33 is if it comes pounding to the downside with more than 3 million shares. That's that little swing low, junior swing point from December the 5th out there. So Western Digital looks uh, very good, Joe D. I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Duncan Steve wants to take a look at the CFLT. CFLT, we'll get that fired up. Here, we'll go uh, see what this is doing. It'll take just a moment uh, to uh, get all these charts. And CFLT is Confluent Inc. Confluent Inc. had a gigantic gap to the downside. Big, huge volume. You don't see it right now. We'll have to pull this chart back just a ways. Uh, but when it was, now you can see it. And uh, so now you've got an A to B pattern. A to, well, you really don't. Yeah, you could draw on an A to B equals CD pattern, but no bearish reversal candle at this stage here. So here's what I would say with regard to CFLT, um, uh, Duncan. And that is, first, I'm going to go to the 30-minute chart. 
The reason we're going to do that is because 2259, as you can see, is its 30-minute TD nine-count breakout area. And Dunk, this has been tested several times. In fact, the last time was this morning between the 9.30 and 10 o'clock time frame when it formed. It had a gap to the downside and it had a bullish hammer candle. So I would say the first area of support is at 22.59 out there. If price closed below 22.59, and certainly today's low because it was a hammer candle, that tells us we had lower. And if we had lower, then 22.13 becomes that price target. Now, that hammer candle that we're looking at on the 30-minute time frame, that low was 22.43. So you have 22.43, the close below that, then 22.13 is certainly in the cards. Below that, I'd say 20.59. But no top out here. That support area should hold. But we come back to this break, we'll finish looking at CFLT. That's for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. Ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! Oh. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
right, so we're taking a look at uh, Confluent Inc. out here, CFLT. So what we notice here, you've got a nice buy the D point pattern that formed on the weekly time frame chart. And what price found resistance at this week was that red oscillator and change line. So that offers caution. And what that tells us is that, Duncan, we need or uh, – who made this request? I apologize. I don't recall now. Um, you got to watch support on the way down. So watch that 2213, 2099, and 2057 levels out there because on that weekly time frame chart, you really didn't want it stopping the way that it did there. So that's all that I've got for you on CFLT. Hope that helps you out. Um, we had. A request to take a look at support levels for the TLT. The TLT, the 30-year Treasury, now the 30-year Treasury, we're trading the uh, March 2024 contract. It formed a TD9 count top yesterday. It's going to complete that pattern just like the TLT. The question is where is support? The first level of support is that oscillator and change line. That's at 93.31. The second level would be the new profile that's attempting to form today. That's at 93.11. Below 93.11, we'd be looking at 91.63 to 92.12. If price were to close below 91.63, the next level of support is at 90.21. Those are the support levels on the TLT. My expectation would be price gets back towards that 93.11 area at find support, and then it rallies from there. But that's just initial instinct based upon what I'm looking at on the weekly time frame chart. To close out the show, let's go take a look at uh, what do we want to take? Let's go take a look at the daily equity future contracts again. What I did notice here, let me just hit my refresh button, is I notice that we've got another topping signal now inside the daily time frame for the ES Mini, and that is wave number seven. And that just simply needs a lower high, which can't take place until the end of Monday, to confirm a top. And why is that important? Because you got a top still in the NQ, still in the Dow, still in the Russell 2000. And so to summarize for Duncan Steve, the seasonal pattern over the last 95 years for the S&P, 126 for the Dow, suggests we have a top that takes us lower into about December 19th. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again on Monday.